With its bent wings and long nose, the US Navy's Corsair was one of the most distinctive American fighters of World War II. It was also one of the fastest. When I flew that thing the first time, I loved it. I think I loved it before I flew it the first time. <laughs> As American forces battled across the Pacific and closed in on Japan, the versatile Corsair earned a fearsome reputation, both as a fighter and as a dive bomber. The Japanese called it whistling death. Time for pity when the screaming eagle flies. That will be the end of the Axis. They must answer with their lies. There'll be smoke on the water, on the land and the sea, when our army and navy overtake the enemy. There'll be smoke on the mountains where the heathen gods stay. And the sun that is shining will go down on that day. I'm here in Cameron Park, California in the mighty Luscombe at Vultures Row, Chuck Wall's world-class warbird restoration facility. When I was younger, I worked for Ralph Pawnee up in Nevada County Airport restoring warbirds or at least rebuilding them. Back then I thought restoring, or what we did to restore an airplane was gather as many wrecks as we could and gather together the parts of the wrecks and and assemble one good airplane out of that. And and out, out of all of those parts we would we would do some sheet metal work. We would reskin some of the sheet metal, but basically we'd be using a lot of existing parts. Those parts are getting so rare today, the aircraft that have not been restored that now it's a matter of historical recreation. Today we have the technology with with uh, CAD CAM drawings and and having the original blueprints that folks like Chuck, given enough money, are able to recreate nearly every single part of these very intricate warbirds. Let's go inside and take a look. In the jig behind me here is Chuck Wall's 1943 F4U1 Birdcage Corsair. Extremely rare, early, early model Corsair. Out of the thousands of Corsairs that were built, there were only 200 or so of these early birdcage models. And they're called birdcage because of the way of the canopy uh, is, is built. And I'll find some pictures here and show you the birdcage canopy versus the bubble canopy of the later models. Correction, this is number 297 out of 900 birdcage model Corsairs built. There are only three known birdcage model Corsairs in existence today. None of those Corsairs are flying. This one will be flying. The world's only flying birdcage Corsair. We don't know how long it's going to take yet, so stay tuned. The first obvious difference is this salmon-colored zinc chromate. I think it's only found on these really early model Corsairs. Normally zinc chromate, of course, is green. And most of these parts that you see in here are brand new construction, built from scratch. In order to fund a project like this, you gotta find one person that wants to 
pay the big bucks to restore one of these aircraft. Then when you go to recreating or restoring that aircraft, rebuilding it, they're cheaper by the dozen. When you start making these assemblies from scratch, you build a dozen of them and you become the, the Corsair guy. You become the guy that's got the warehouse full of parts of Corsair parts. So if you're gonna bother making one, you might as well make a bunch of them. And here we're looking at a bunch of Corsair rudder assemblies. And a lot of this recreation starts with the original drawings from Chance Vought aircraft, the original engineering drawings. And these are what is so critical to this operation here. These drawings are nearly unobtainium. Here's a set of original Corsair outer wing panels. With a good set of outer wing panels and the engineering drawings, you can build yourself a set of jigs, these big steel frame things right here. These jigs are within, what's the tolerance on these jigs? 20 thousandths. 20 thousandths. From these jigs you can hang a plumb bob from the top of them and define the center line of the wing and build you a set of wings from these jigs. Here's a critical component on the Corsair, the folding wing Corsair. These are the folding wing pivot points, the mounts. Show you how they make these. You cannot always reuse these mounts as you find these aircraft that they're recovering these days are found in the bottom of the ocean or out in the jungle somewhere so a lot of the parts are completely scrap but with the original parts and the original drawings you can recreate or rebuild some of these parts so here's what a, uh, a pivoting wing mount looks like now let's go see how they make one first you start with the raw material 4340 forged billet steel Here's the original drawings for the component, including all the callouts for the specific specification of materials. And with the help of modern computers today, we can use a solid works program shown here on the right. And what's this called over here, Chuck? Surf cam? Correct. Surf cam on the left. And get the exact drawings and the exact specifications to feed to the machine to build the part. That CAD-based software is fed into the machine here, and then the machine can build the part from the stock billet. So again, cheaper by the dozen. If you're gonna make one, you might as well make a bunch of them. Now here's an original wing fold hinge, all pitted, fresh out of the jungle, cleaned up slightly. And here's a complete row of brand new wing fold hinges for your next Corsair project. When these aircraft are recovered out of the jungle or the ocean or wherever, a lot of the parts are just scrap. They're basically pattern parts that are unserviceable. But some parts are very hard to recreate, like landing gears. And landing gears are pretty rugged, so they tend to survive pretty well. So here's enough landing gear parts for what, six aircraft? Six individual Corsairs. They're all going to be disassembled and completely rebuilt. Now, if you're a Corsair fan, you know one of the unique things about the Corsair, well, obviously it's a bent wing design. That enables you to get the biggest engine and, and the biggest prop on the biggest engine and still be able to handle carrier qualifications, heavy-duty carrier landings. In order to get this intricate landing gear system to work, the landing gear on the Corsair had to rotate nearly 90 degrees to fold up into the wing. This is the assembly that does it, more unobtainium. Here's the casting that goes up into the wing and here's the component that allows the wing to rotate. What is this material? Manganese bronze. Manganese bronze. They sent this back to the lab to, to do the metallurgy to find out what this material was. Manganese bronze to prevent um, galling or scalling of the threads, galling of the threads while, the, while this works and it's the motion of these threads that allows the gear to rotate as it retracts. And here is a brand new piece, several thousand dollars right there into just that one piece. Chuck, did you send this out to get built? You built it right here in the shop. All done in-house. All done in-house. And of course, very non-standard, unique thread design. This is Stainless Steel Steve. 
he's working on one of the most, another very intricate part of this design. Building something like a Corsair it involves tons of compound, complex curves. Parts of that, most of it's aluminum of course, but some of it is stainless steel. This panel here, for this panel here, for example, mounts right behind the engine. Here's where the exhaust comes through. It needs to be stainless steel to handle that hot exhaust. Steve builds these from scratch. Again, using the original drawings and a pattern to work with. The, this is going to take a lot of talent on an English wheel and, and on a shrinking machine to get these parts to fit. This is a Corsair center section jig. There are no factory jigs left in existence. There are no factory drawings of the jigs. Each jig has to be built from scratch. The basic process is to find one good Corsair center section and from there build this jig. Let me show you another detail. Even though this jig is welded steel, once you get the final alignment based off of the good aircraft that's in the jig, you don't weld the final um, setting. You use epoxy to set it in here because if, if you weld it, it's going to change the dimension. So the final set is done with epoxy. Here's a Corsair tail section in its jig. Here's a bird cage tail cone section from a wreck. You see the navy blue paint, but underneath the navy blue paint is the rare and unusual salmon colored zinc chromate. That's not just red dirt. Here's an example of some of the extreme corrosion these wrecks are going to sustain. That's historic. This wreckage was left in the jungle of Espirito Santo from World War II for many, many years. This Corsair is an actual combat veteran. Chuck, what are some of the squadrons that this particular Corsair served with? It started out in MAG-11 and then went to VMF-214 swashbucklers. VMF-214 swashbucklers. And Black Sheep. And then the Black Sheep. This is an original Black Sheep aircraft. Crashed October 1th of 43. October 1, 1943 was its final flight. Hey, the uh, pilot was killed in this, right? Ensign Preston Wolf. Ensign Preston Wolf. Anybody that's ever modeled a Corsair before knows about these wheels. These are the original mag wheels, magnesium wheel, here shown below. Of course, corrosion takes its time on these real easily and fires. So he's recreated from 7075 aluminum brand new wheels. Significantly stronger with only a slight weight penalty. You want to scratch build a speed ring, you know, the nose cowling on a Corsair, you're going to spend a lot of time on an English wheel and a shrinking machine and, and a, what, a power hammer? Power hammer. T just to get to this shape here. Still many hours to finish it off. Let me show you the dies. Here's a set of aluminum dies for that speed ring built from scratch from the original drawings. Chuck strives for historical accuracy here at Vultures Row Aviation. I didn't notice the flag. 48 stars. Inside the paint booth here you can see Chuck's custom uh, recreation of the correct paint of the period, the salmon colored zinc chromate. Not available in stores. <laughs> And this is a very rare birdcage model Corsair oil tank.
completely restored. A lot of the Corsair assemblies were spot welded at the factory. This machine replicates the factory spot welding, 125 kVA computer controlled now spot welding machine. Here's an example of spot welding on the Corsair. Initially the rib on the other side is held in place with a rivet and then spot welded in between the rivets. And here's the ribs on the other side of the spot welded piece. So happy December 7th. I hope you enjoyed this brief tour of Vultures Row Aviation and his latest project on these extremely rare bird cage model, early model Corsair aircraft. We'll be following this for, for a long time. We don't, again, we don't know how long it's going to take until we get one of these in the air, but he's going to get one in the air and I'll be there. See you here. All the day long with the rain or shine, she's a part of the assembly line. She's making history, working for victory. Rosie, the riveter, keeps a sharp lookout for sabotage. Sitting up there on the fuselage, that little frill can do more than a bear can do. Rosie, the riveter, Rosie's got a boyfriend, Charlie. Charlie, he's a Marine. Rosie is protecting Charlie. Working all the time on the riveting machine. When they gave her a production lead, she was as proud as a girl could be. There's something true about red, white, and blue about Rosie, the riveter. This Corsair is an actual warbird veteran, an actual <laughs> flying yeah, ship, take two. <laughs> Rosie, the riveter, Rosie, Rosie, Rosie.